This is going to become a thing now, isn't it? It's going to become a thing. I like my fruit and barley. I like my fruit and barley. Oh, Italian food. Italian cuisine is one of my favourites. I've got a bunch of recipes on the channel. I just love its simplicity. I love its freshness of ingredients. And Italians know how to put a good meal together with very few ingredients, let me tell you. And this is one of them. Ragu alla bolognese. Or here in the UK, we have a bastardised version of it called spaghetti bolognese. Or spag bol. It ain't the same, folks. It really ain't the same. This is just like a whole new level. There's no jarred sauce or spaghetti in this. But one thing is for sure is it tastes flipping delicious. It does take time. This is going to tick over for a couple of hours. But listen, Luther Vandross and Janet Jackson weren't correct. The best things in life aren't free. The best things in life take time. Now, whilst I'll claim mine is authentic, I'm sure there's going to be some Italians in the comments going, no, sir, no, you are wrong. There's going to be controversy. Okay, I mean, I'm putting pancetta in mine. Some would argue not to put that in. But listen, it's going to be tasty. Now, before we dive into this, remember to watch the video all the way through. Hit the subscribe button, and when you do, make sure you click the little bell icon. Allow notifications. That way, when I upload a new video, you get notified. Ragu bolognese. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so this story starts with carrot, celery, and onion. Like a lot of delicious things in this world, this is gonna be our base. So what I'm gonna do is just top and tail these carrots. I'm not even gonna peel them, although I have washed them. Okay, if your carrots are nice and fresh, you don't really need to for this recipe. Stick those in the bowl, because I'm gonna blitz them in the processor, but I just wanna break them down just a little bit. Same with the celery. Now I did peel this, just the outside layer, because it was a bit stringy. But if yours is nice and fresh, you don't need to. One sort of medium-ish sized onion. Oh, this one's peeling really nice and easily. Thanks, onion. Thanks. You're welcome. And again, just break it down slightly into chunks so it can fit in there. Good. Now, before I grate these vegetables up, what I'm going to do is chop up this pancetta. Because I don't want thick chunks in the finished meat sauce. So, just taking a knife, all I'm going to do is literally run through it. You want it roughly the same sort of size as your mincemeat. So I'm going to carry on, attack this like a maniac, and I'll see you folks in a second. Right, so I've kind of minced up the pancetta. You can see there's a bit of texture there. It's not completely kind of mushy. Now you can do this in a food processor, but just be really careful because you don't want to turn this into like a paste. So all I'm going to do now is get these vegetables blitzed up, nicely grated, and then we can start cooking. Right, so here are the grated vegetables, ready to go. Just gonna get that into a bowl. So I've got my pan here and I'm gonna get this onto a low heat, nice and low. And to the cold pan, I'm gonna add the pancetta. And the reason you're adding it cold is because you want to render the fat out, because that's gonna give you lots of flavor and just make it like super yummy, basically. And what I'm gonna do is gently bring that up to a medium low heat it's going to start to render the fat out. It's going to take like five minutes. Just take your time with it. And you don't need to make this like super crispy. Just like slightly translucent. That's all you need to do. So check back in a minute and I'll show you the next bit. Now, there you go, see, after about five minutes, you can see all that glistening fat that's come out of the pancetta. There's no olive oil in there. If it's not very fatty, you might need to add a touch of olive oil. Blinking flies. It's a bit hot at the minute, so they're just flittering around, winding me up. I am going to add just a tiny bit of olive oil, about half a tablespoon, because it is a little bit dry. And the next thing I'm going to add, keeping it on a low heat, is our grated vegetables. You don't have to grate it, you can just kind of chop it really small, but that's going to take you ages. And it's also going to make the sauce lumpy, like chunky, and that's not what I want to achieve. And what we want to do with these vegetables is to sweat them down till they go nice and translucent. You've seen me do this before on many dishes, but you've got to take your time with it. Don't rush it. It's going to take a while. It's going to take like 15 minutes. But listen, have a glass of wine, FaceTime your mum, your dad, your sister, your lover. You know, just chill out. This is easy food. It just takes time. It needs a little time to cook this out. Adam's going to have a glass of wine. Thought you were going to help me. You said to me this morning, 
I want to help you make that ragout a la bolognese because it looks delicious and I want to help. Don't worry about me, got this under control. All right, bye then. Okay, so the vegetables are well on the way now. They're going nice and soft. And then to that, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of tomato paste. That's the only tomato product we're putting in here. There's no tomato sauce, no tin tomatoes, none of that jazz. Just this. So remember, it's a meat sauce, not a tomato sauce. And we need to cook that out, as you've seen me do before. Doesn't need long, a minute, minute or two is gonna be fine. So now that the tomato paste is cooked out, we can add the meats. The meats, yes, meats, two meats. Not one meat, two. Now I'm using a mixture of pork and also beef. The reason for the pork is it adds fattiness and the beef adds the nice, rich, meaty flavor. So in they go, just kind of crumble them in. The secret to this sauce is to kind of make sure that you break down that meat. Meats. Okay, you don't want big fat chunks of meat in this sauce. You want a nice, refined, sort of delicate sauce. So kind of use your spatula, your wooden spoon, and keep breaking that meat down. Now if you're sitting there thinking, Adam, where the f is the garlic? Doesn't need it, doesn't need it. Not everything that's delicious needs to have garlic in it. You could add it in if you wanted to. It's up to you, it's your dinner. It doesn't need it guys, honestly. This is a very traditional, simple Italian meat ragu. And look at this, right? After a few minutes, just sort of tending to it, looking after it, like there's no big fat lumps of meat in there. Okay, it's all nice and refined and delicious. All nicely even in size and color. And you'll notice that all the water has come out of the meat as well. It's all kind of reduced down. The fat's come out of the meat. So now we can move on to the next bit, which is adding wine. Yes, white wine. Not red, white wine. Now I'm a firm believer that you should use a wine that you enjoy, okay? Why would you want to put any old crappy rubbish wine in your food? If you're not gonna drink it, why would you eat it? So pick a nice wine, doesn't have to be super expensive. I've got, what is it I used? It was a Sicilian Vermentino. It's very nice, indeed, if I do say so myself. A nice Pinot Grigio would work as well. And what I need to do is to gently simmer that just until that wine reduces by about half, which will just intensify the wine flavor, but take out the alcohol. And it won't take very long at all, a couple of minutes, if that. Right, so the wine has reduced down. So now I'm gonna add some milk. And you're thinking, what the frickin' hell is he doing? Milk? Now what does this do? Okay, so it does two things. As it slowly cooks, it tenderizes the meat, keeps it nice and juicy, but it also adds a silkiness, a velvetiness to that sauce. And I'm also gonna add a touch of chicken stock, not too much, it's just to kind of top it up really. And I know it looks kind of sloppy now, but trust me, it will come together. So what I'm gonna do is pop a lid on that, now, you'll notice we haven't seasoned this with any salt or pepper. We're gonna do that at the end, because if you add it now, it might be too salty, because there's salt in the pancetta and also the stock. So I'm gonna turn it off on this hob, and I'm gonna move it over to the back, nice and gently. I'm just gonna get the back hob on, nice and low, nice and low. So that is the meat ragu assembled. The only thing left to do now is flipping weight, weight. You need to cook that low and slow for a long time, like two hours minimum. If you can go to three hours, great. Four hours, even better. Just really nice and slow, like you were making a stew. And you just want to see just like the odd little bubble just kind of puttering to the top. Don't want no aggressive bubbles just going It's not what you want. Nice and gently. And once it's kind of ready, we can season it up, serve it up with our pasta, and then eat it. And you've got like two hours at least to kind of do what you need to do. You know, go walk the dog, go see the family. Oh no, you can't do that. Zoom call your family, shout at the passing traffic, go for a run, get drunk, play golf, give your cat a massage, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. Massage. Be nice. You need a brush, actually. You definitely need a brush. Ay, but why are you biting? Oh, Jesus. Right then, two hours. This is what you get. A nice, luscious looking meat sauce. Now for me, this is just right. Okay, it's not too thick, but it's not too thin either. If you wanna reduce it down for a thicker consistency, then go ahead, just take the lid off, just to reduce it down. But that is gonna be fine for me. But what I do need to do is taste it for seasoning. Oh my God. This smells delicious. Let's taste it. 
doesn't really need much salt, but I am going to add a touch. And it does need some black pepper. And that is your meat sauce done. And all I'm going to do now is just leave this on the back there, trickle away, nice and gently, whilst I get on and cook some pasta. Then we can eat it. Okay, pasta, 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 pasta. It's ready. Tanky telly's done. What I'm going to do is I've got a bowl here. I'm going to take our pasta out. Doesn't matter if you get a bit of the pasta water in there as well. In fact, it's good. And I'm just going to take a small ladle full of this sauce because remember this is very rich. Just a small ladle like that. And I'm just going to take my tongs and just mix that all together. Don't just dump the flipping sauce on top and have bland, boring pasta underneath. You don't want that. I'm just going to add just a flick of pasta water. Just to loosen it up a touch. Just twist it out onto the plate. And of course, another small ladleful of our meat sauce, just on top. And of course, I'm going to finish it with some Parmesan cheese. Why the heck wouldn't you? You don't need any olive oil on the top. You don't need any herbs, no basil, oregano. You can add it if you want, but it doesn't need it. This is as simple as it gets, as traditional as it gets. Look at it, it's a thing of beauty. But let's stop looking at it. Let's eat it. It smells incredible. Let's get a bit of everything, bit of pasta, bit of that sauce. Let's go in. It is so different to a spaghetti bolognese, but it's 10 times better. It's very meaty. Well, it's a meat sauce but it's got a refined flavour. It's actually quite delicate. Yes, it's rich with that meat flavour. The milk has really tenderised the meat, made the sauce nice and silky, but it's not too heavy. And this sauce is really versatile. You can make lasagna out of this. Heck, stick it in between two slices of bread. It's gonna be good. But it's such a simple sauce to make, and it's the proper way to do it. But listen, give it a go, guys, it's delicious. And you saw, that was really easy to do. The only thing you had to do was wait. It needed time, and that is crucial. Don't try and flip in shortcut this and do it in half an hour, because it won't work. But anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what you think of my ragu a la bolognese. But before we go, remember to hit that subscribe button, and when you do, make sure to click the little bell icon, allow all notifications. That way, when I upload a new video, you get notified. And remember to do all the usual stuff, like share, all that kind of business. And I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video. And bye for now. You see, Martha, this is a proper one pan pasta. All right, technically it's two. Still better than yours.